Hi, Jessica Rabe here, one of the co-founders of Data Track Research. My co-founder Nicholas and I recently paid another visit to Station F, the world's largest startup campus located in Paris. This time, we had the unique opportunity to have in-depth discussions with four of its most high-profile founders. Before I share our key takeaways from these conversations, I'm going to just briefly explain why Station F is so important to global equity investors. The reason is actually pretty simple. Disruptive innovation drives long-run equity returns more than any other factor. This table shows the top six, six names by weighting in the S&P 500 and the MSCI Europe Equity Index using the IEUR ETF as an investable proxy. We also included when they were founded, their 10-year compounded annual total returns and comparable index returns over the same time frame. It shows that the S&P 500 has dramatically outperformed MSCI Europe over the last 10 years with a 13.6 versus 7.1% compounded annual total return, led by companies that were on average founded 50 years after the most valuable public companies in Europe. That shows just how powerful innovation is and disruptive technology combined with global scale tends to generate very strong returns over time. The largest six names in the S&P 500 are now almost a third of the index. MSCI Europe doesn't have the same concentration risk with only, 11 with only an 11% weighting to its top six stocks because its largest weightings have compounded far slower than the S&P's comparable names at an average of 11.4% versus 33.9%. This is why the only long-term solution for European, European stock markets is for the EU to build an ecosystem that develops entrepreneurship at scale, like Station F. We explained all the details behind how Station F does this in a video last November, which you can go back and watch, and, and we recommend you do. Uh, but the overall point here is that the continent needs many more Station Fs where startups have all the resources to achieve long-term success. This goes far beyond just getting seed capital. New companies need to operate in a system of social support, such as exists in San Francisco or New York City. This simply does not exist at the necessary scale anywhere on the European continent except for Station F. With that, let's move on to what we learned from from Station F, from four of Station F's most promising startup founders. First, here's some background information on them, including their names, companies, and what they do. Now, I, I do really apologize in advance for mispronouncing any of their names, uh, but I'll try my best. Uh, Shems Rajabli of Monaco, a fintech company focused on bringing banking services and fixed price virtual currencies to Francophone Africa and the African diaspora around the world. Uh, Louis Lucas of Upstream, an internal corporate communication service using email rather than closed systems like Slack. Ludovic Granger of Leadbay, which offers predictive prospecting for corporate sales teams. And then Arthur Kudui, who kindly shared his company's vision and personal thoughts, but whose project is listed on LinkedIn as Stealth Startup, as stealth startup, startup for now. From these founders, we learned four things. The first is that Paris is a very attractive location for tech startups, and in some ways can actually be even better than San Francisco or New York City. For one, there's a deep bench of software engineering talent that doesn't require the sort of lofty compensation that is now so common in the States. Additionally, for businesses that focus on the French-speaking African market or Europe generally, being based in Paris keeps the sales and development teams in a closer or same time zone as their customers. And lastly, many founders and employees simply don't want to live in California or New York with their high costs of living and other lifestyle challenges. Some are also born and raised in Europe and want to be closer to their families and friends and live in a culture they're more familiar with. At the same time, our second takeaway is that U.S. startup infrastructure is still stronger in several key areas. America is home to the most highly skilled software salespeople, which is a, cr a critical issue for most startups since they need to scale quickly in order to draw incremental funding. The European venture capital ecosystem is also only, only about a decade old. 
As a result, VCs there are generally only comfortable funding seed and early stage rounds. If a company needs Series C or later funding, they usually need to go to the U.S. for capital. Additionally, European VCs are very aware that local public markets are unattractive places for younger companies to list relative to the U.S., so in some cases, they push founders for an early sale rather than letting the business grow to the point where they could IPO. And lastly, the Eurozone market is more fragmented than the U.S., making it harder for European startups to achieve to achieve critical mass versus their American counterparts. This is another reason VCs may push for an earlier exit. Moving on now to our third lesson, everyone we spoke to agrees that artificial intelligence is the critical technology of the future, but there's a lot of uncertainty about how it will change the global tech landscape. There's one point of consensus, however. In 10 years time, OpenAI will be the most important tech company in the world. These founders also expressed confidence that French startup Mistral would be a leading enterprise AI provider. Aside from that, opinions were split about how AI would change global tech leadership. Some thought AI will integrate everything and others believe that its adoption could cause fragmentation. For our fourth and last point, I have just a few other thoughts expressed by the founders. First, recent grads from top European engineering schools are now much more interested in starting their own business businesses or working for a startup. This is a major shift from the past, where their talent was most interested in working for large corporations. Second, U.S. startups are more adept at pivoting to a new business plan versus their European counterparts. And third, Working in the Station F facility is a major positive for startup founders since it gives them access to resources like venture capital, technical support from major tech companies, and it also helps them build their professional networks. The upshot from these conversations is that AI will fundamentally reshape global commerce and Europe generally, and France specifically, need to have a leadership role in that transition. That ties directly to potential long-run equity returns outside the U.S., the point I made at the start of this video. If international markets are to compete for capital, the companies listed there must adopt AI at rates at least similar to U.S. firms and also create new companies that can be AI leaders. The future is more uncertain than at any point since the early days of the internet and the stakes for geographic regions, uh, countries, and companies are even higher now than in the 1990s. With that, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Please hit uh, the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed it. And you can check out our daily investment newsletter by signing up free on our website, datatrekresearch.com. There's no credit card or personal information required. Just drop your email in. You can also find out more about Station F by going to their, their website. And uh, just thanks again for watching. We hope you have a great day.